you know, it's funny. I, I interviewed a guy and bring on potentially to help run one of my side businesses. And, you know, I basically told him, I was like, I don't, are you ready for entrepreneurship? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like, it's your first whack. And it almost scares me because I don't think you know what you're in for. And you can't, you know what I mean? As I'm trying to interview this guy to be more of a high level guy, I was right. like, this isn't just sales. This isn't just, you know, you, you figure it out. It's like, you have to go and get your face kicked in and make no money for a while. And you're going to have losses and you're going to, but you're playing a long game to build some enterprise value. And you're going to get some upside in equity with this. Right? Well, you're, you're exactly right. You know, entrepreneurship and you, it's, it's hard to even describe to people what entrepreneurship even is. And, you know, it's funny when I was a young guy, you know, the old, older generation would look at us all scared you know it's like oh my gosh you're you're the people that's going to take care of us and now i'm looking at some of these you know high schoolers and college kids because i've got some high schoolers and the biggest thing that scares me and i look at them as hopefully as as entrepreneurial in some way the thing that scares me is their ability to problem solve you know because you never you never know what's going to be thrown at you you know you can't anticipate all the problems i don't know that i could train someone to be the CEO of Remington Solar unless they lived with it for a couple of years, you know, to be able to, because you can't anticipate all the twists and turns. And it's all a challenge, it's all fun, but you have to have the ability to be flexible on a dime. What's up, guys? Sam Taggart here with the DDD podcast, and today I, uh, I it was a cool day. I went snowboarding, got 17 inches of powder, and a lot of people that love the snow. That's always a, a very gift from heaven. But those that love the snow or want to come to the snow, January 20th and 21st, we got Door to Door Con coming up. So make sure you get your tickets. And one of the things that's also cool is it's during the week of Sundance, and so. A lot of people like to go to the see the music festival and see or the movie festival and see kind of the famous like actors and actresses. I grew up in Park City, so I never actually went to a Sundance film. I would go and just look for, you know, Halle Berry and Will Smith and try to find like famous people. Um, but anyway, so I uh, we got a very special guest today and he came and was a vendor last year at Door Door Con. He's this year, uh, Murray Smith. He is the uh, owner of Remington Solar which is not your traditional solar company. He is Solar Attic Fans, and they provide a really cool way to offset utility bills and a a value add to the solar and roofing companies. It's just kind of an additional product. You know, a lot of people have uh, a problem with retention, and I'm I'm gonna speak to this, and we're gonna kind of dive into some strategy on how you use auxiliary products, because when you have a three month or a two month lag time, you're dealing with cancels, you're dealing with buyback, you're, you know, competitors coming and stealing deals, you're dealing with all this stuff. Where a solar attic fan, we can properly do what's called put a hole in the wall, meaning you can go cut a hole in the roof and now you've started business even though they haven't gotten the full solar. And so Murray has really created an awesome solution and has helped a ton of different solar companies leverage this product as a dealer program to an addition to their solar, you know, their solar sale as an adder and or roofers to really speed up the installation, create stickier customers, create a really good value, and then also show a better offset. And so we're gonna talk about all those things, but welcome to the show, Murray. Um, super excited to have you on. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much, Sam. Yeah, and had a great time at DDDCon last year and learned a lot about the folks that are out there, you know, knocking on doors and so it's really been a great meeting of the minds with our product and and helping those guys and women out as well what was your yeah i guess was that your first door to door con last year it was it really was and i was just absolutely overwhelmed at you know the energy and the response and and uh uh the enthusiasm and optimism that all those folks so it was a lot of great energy out there so really enjoyed it and learned a lot about how to sell our product better and how they can sell ours and 
And uh, it was amazing to me. I, it, it, one of my big takeaways was how few people that are in the solar business, residential solar business, had never heard of, of the solar attic fan before. It's unbelievable. I mean, we've been doing this almost 15 years now. And it was just like, oh yeah, everybody's heard about us. I think we sell more solar attic fans than anybody in the country. Uh, we sell them with major retailers online. Um, and, and we've just been selling, but it's just, you meet these guys and you're like, oh, solar attic fan, what is that? I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, so it was that was a big surprise. I had heard about him back when I, uh, my ex-father-in-law was like raving about him. He got a new roof. He got some solar attic fans put in and he's like, it's unbelievable. And he has a, he has a Rambler, but I'm talking like a 7,000 square foot Rambler. So it's just tons of roof, right? So he just had, you know, and he runs a pool, a hot tub, his electric bills are stupid. And he was like, dude, it's been insane to see like, and he just like literally spent like 40 minutes telling me about these solar attic fans. And I was like, wow you i've never seen anybody so ecstatic about something so you know and, and and then it got me thinking and i was like oh these are actually really cool like people don't realize how much energy loss happens due to all the uh, the the heat getting trapped in people's homes and all of that um not proper ventilation and how much that really causes your electricity bill to go up because your hvac has to keep running to to keep your your home cool so anyway it, 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 that was my first introduction to them well, you're you're exactly right, and you know it's funny. Years ago, we're we're down out of Dallas, Texas, and a hot summer day. It might be easily 145, 150 degrees in an attic, and I I saw that printed somewhere, and I I couldn't believe that that was really a real number. Oh, I know, and I know it's real. At one time, I <laughs> I sold Dallas, Texas, my very first summer in alarms, and so any alarm people listening, uh, I'm <laughs> it's it's I'm 18, 2008 and i have my technicians this is back when alarm system was so run the phone line through the attic so i had to hardwire and i remember one of my texts was like oh you think your job's hard come up one of these attics with me and crawl around in there it was hell and just watching these guys have to do these attic crawls and attic runs i was like okay yeah i'll keep selling sorry <laughs> no it's scary it was scary hot and i remember going up into my attic and I'm, i went up there and i was like wait a minute i know that i put three feet of insulation, blown in insulation in here a year or it was like two years earlier. I was like, I didn't dream it. And it was, it was all gone. It was all literally dust. And I'm like, I know I, I, mean, I, I thought I was, I thought I was dreaming. And you know, it looked like one of the, you know, when I got it, it looked like one of those Russian novels, you know, with snow everywhere, you know, or probably like the snow you saw today, you know, and, and uh, two years later, it was all gone just from the heat. It had all degraded. And that was right as I was getting into the solar attic fan business, like I said, about 15 years ago. So that was just one of about, you know, 10 benefits of these solar attic fans that they can do. I mean, everyone says, okay, so how much heat is you going to get out? How much is going to lower my utility bills? I mean, that's a great question. And, you know, like I said, pretty much in the industry, we'll quote a two year payback on the cost on these to a homeowner. But every house is different. Every Everything is a little bit different. So you don't want to get caught, you know, saying something that the customer thinks is slightly different, but there's so many other benefits as well. I mean, how much does it cost to replace a furnace up in your attic, an air conditioning furnace? I mean, seven, $8,000 on a, on a moderate sized home. Well, I don't want it to be 145 degrees up there. I mean, so that's a good reason to have a solar attic fan, you know? No. So. Yeah. So, so let's talk about like your entrepreneurial journey for a second. And then we're going to dive into, you know, if you're in sales, how, not just a solar attic fan, but like an auxiliary product is going to help solidify deals and add value to your, your proposition and create a unique identifier. Because if you're out there doing the same thing everybody else is doing, you're a dealer, you're selling the same loan, and you're, you're basically just slapping a new logo. Like, how do you be unique? And this is one key way that you could uniquely bring to the equation of like saying, hey, we actually do more of a whole home energy audit and one of the things we found is easy is just we install a solar fan or two and what that does is it just ventilates the roof that way we don't have to use as many solar panels because the output of solar panels to to cover the cost of uh of the electrical need is it's more expensive to add more panels 
than it is to reduce their electricity consumption. So the redu reduction of electricity consumption through, you know, insulation, new windows, attic fan, things like that, those are all contributors to basically make it to where you can give them a 90% offset and still quote 100% offset more or less. And it, it's, it's showing a cheaper value proposition, which I think a lot of people have not created you know, they, they, they've kind of gone away from it. And I'm like, guys, that's just such a good strategy to really become competitive in pricing and to speed up your installs and create stickier customers. So, but tell me how you got into like entrepreneurship and, and, and like, you were like, oh, just, you know, years ago, but like, what were we doing before? And well, sure those are, uh, those are great questions. And I am, I mean, if you want to get me started on a, uh, on, on a great, conversation it's about entrepreneurship and starting a business and that kind of thing i'm one of the few serial entrepreneurs you'll meet because most of them are not really successful i probably had 20 different business ideas before 15 years ago and uh, maybe one or two of them worked and a lot of them didn't uh, but once i kind of started to focus and we were trying to find some products that we could manufacture that would ship nice and neat would we could get a good margin on our dealers could get a good margin on and the customers could get a lot of good value out of and this was one a physician friend of mine said hey you heard about these solar attic fans and um, my wife actually had some contacts back in her home country in china uh where she went to college and started uh we kind of sourced some friends of hers that had factories and and we uh modified a, a, a fan and made it a whole lot better and made it for the american market and so we redesigned it and uh started manufacturing and we shipped a container over and uh, to see if we could sell them and they did and then we did two containers and then we did we doubled that it's kind of like the grains on a checkerboard doubling as you go across it gets to be a pretty nice number if you can stick in there for you know a dozen years and so i think I'm pretty sure we sell more solar attic fans than anybody in the United States right now. And there's several people that do it. So um, I, I love the small business aspect. Uh, we have our own uh, 20,000 square foot warehouse in Dallas and we bring everything in and and uh, I've got great people that take care of the product and take care of the customers. And we answer a lot of questions. We love the reviews and it's, you know, it's just the, it's just the American success story at this point, you know? I, know that. I mean, it's funny you say that because like my dad was a serial entrepreneur kind of you know and he many different businesses from inventing products to real estate to land development and and in, in from the skincare industry to the bag industry you know like totally different um but it's cool to see that you found a need and you said okay let's figure out how to make this cost effective a win for our dealers a win for you and a win for the customer and yeah, I think too often people are scared of entrepreneurship and they're scared of doing something different. Like, you know, Solar Attic Fan, you kind of probably are one of the original pioneers. Like, you know, I haven't heard of tons of Solar Attic Fan companies, but you know, it's not my world. But like, I just, for me, I think it's inspiring to see people go find a need, go find a product and then make, turn it into a business. And I don't, you know, you just said, what's a product that would be good enough margin, sell different, and you found solar attic fans. It was like, were you like super passionate about solar attic fans before this? Or was it like, you know, like, so yeah, you need to be so like, do what you love and he's so passionate about the product. I'm like, eh, like, you know what though, the, you, you bring up a great point, Sam, which is what is the passion? And for me, the passion is the freedom and independence of owning your own business and seeing a product with your brand that you created with your name on it going out the door and to have literally tens of thousands of customers saying, oh, this is great. I love it. To hear that, that's like the applause if I were a musician, you know? So what is what is the passion? You know, that's where the passion comes from. The product is really just uh, secondary, even though I love the product now, you know, you want to be the best. What's very interesting from an entrepreneurial standpoint is that the reason why I think I had more failures than successes in, in my 20s and 30s with different product ideas is because I thought they were cool products. I thought they were really neat without knowing whether or not there was a demand. 
all of a sudden I come up with a product that Solar Attic Fan, I mean, you put this in front of a customer in the sun and watch it kick on and start blowing air. Yeah, the customer has to have it. But if I'm talking to someone at a cocktail party about a solar attic vein, it's like, yeah, okay, let me go get another drink. But so it's not the product, but there's a need for it. And I'm just filling the need. And I think that's, you know, if there were ever any advice, which sometimes I do, you know, I get asked from younger folks about how, how oh, Murray, I want to start a business like yours. You, you've got it figured out. Well, it's not really me. It's being able to spot a demand, to find a need and then fill it. Don't come up with a great idea. The world is full of great ideas. And, and I think it was uh, Mark Cuban on Shark Tank that said, you know, whenever he sees something that's a little sketchy, you know, someone coming out with some kind of goofy product, what does he say? He says, have you sold any of them? Well, no. Okay, well then go sell 10. Go sell 10 and then come back and talk to me. Yeah. And I'd remembered that. And I said, okay. But now, unfortunately, I couldn't just get 10 from, from our manufacturer. I had to get, you know, pretty much 500. So it was a risk. But that's all the risk it was. And then it did, it's not quite the risk anymore, you know? And I'm sure your dad probably knows what I'm talking about, you know, where, you know, you learn kind of the market demand. You learn that more than the product itself. So my, my dad invented a... Here's an interesting example. It was a bike lock that was a pump as well, called an airlock. And he's thinking, you know, I'm knocking two birds up with one stone. You get to have a bike lock where you go, it clips onto the frame of your bike. And if you get a flat tire, you can pump up your tire. Um, so you have a tire pump on the go. And he's thinking, you know, everybody would want that. It's a tire pump and a lock. And what happened was he's like, okay, I'd make them for let's say 30 and so I'd price them at 80 to try to keep my margin and nobody was willing to pay 80 bucks for a lock and a pump. And he's like, you're competing against people that pay 15, 20 bucks for a pump and maybe 20 bucks for a lock. But he's like, I couldn't make money selling them for 40 or 30 when I get them for 30. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's yeah. interesting, he's like, you know, talking to different entrepreneurs and their failures, you know, and, and, and it'd be interesting to hear about some of your your great ideas that never went anywhere. And now you've got a failures are the best learning experience ever. There's, you know, when I'm talking to another entrepreneur, f failure is nothing to be ashamed of. No. I mean, that's that's where you learn. And uh, as a matter of fact, I would never invest in somebody that hasn't had failures. I why mean, that's that? why do you say that? there's 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 more to that? Why do you say that? there's a lot to that but that experience is something that you can only learn really from i mean that, that i mean that's real value you know for someone to be able to you know lose money on a real estate deal you know boy I, the, the next real estate deal they're they're probably not going to make it's certainly that mistake they may make some other mistakes you know yeah. but um yeah i just i think i think failure is is fantastic you know there was a there was a talk show I saw years ago and a group of women and the, one lady was interviewing another one about some success. They were one, 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 one was a successful entrepreneur and uh, the interviewer said, well, tell me, tell me what's the secret of your success. And she was kind of quiet. She was kind of soft spoken, but she said failure. And the interviewer said, yeah, yeah, well, I know all that, but really what's the secret of your success? She didn't like that answer. She wanted a more glamorous, glitzy answer like, I was able to meet, you know, these people in Hollywood and they introduced me to somebody else in New York City and we all got on a plane and then it all came together. Well, it, that's not how at least the, the, the successful entrepreneurial small business, and I say small business, less than 50 million in revenue. Most of those success stories are born out of failure. They're born out of ashes of some kind. And again, that's, that's hard to teach. You got to kind of live it. And, you know, again, I've, my my greatest failure, and, you know, I wish we had more time to talk about it, but my greatest failure, um, if, if, if uh, there's such a thing as an oxymoron like that, was a recipe machine that I invented in 1987. Computers were just going from amber colored to color. That was like a big deal. And I invented a, uh, recipe machine because I was a young single guy and I thought, you know, if a grocery store could tell me how to cook all this stuff, I'd buy a lot more. And so I invented a computer that would do it. And there are about 
five or six very funny stories that came out of that experience. It ended up being a dismal failure, but I got it in a store and I stood there and watched kids dump queso down the printer output. And I watched uh, uh, the printed paper roll, roll out of it continually without stopping because it didn't have a break on it. I mean, it just a million different stories. Now I was a 21 year old kid, you know, trying to figure this out, but uh, there are even more stories out of that, but it was just a great experience. And even today with a solar attic fan, you know, and, and we, someone's trying to come up or we're trying to come up with a new design or I shake my head and I remember that recipe machine because nothing is easy. You think that getting a piece of paper out of a, out of a printer, out of a slot and a customer tears that off and you think that's going to run smoothly without 50 different ways to mess it up. You know, so even today, I remember that as we do our design changes or or come up with products and ideas, nothing's easy in manufacturing and design. That is so good. And I think, you know, it's funny. I, I interviewed a guy I'm bringing on potentially to help run one of my side businesses. And, you know, I basically told him, I was like, I don't, are you ready for entrepreneurship? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like, it's your first whack. And it almost scares me because I don't think you know what you're in for. And you can't, you know what I mean? As I'm trying to interview this guy to be more of a high level guy, I was right. like, this isn't just sales. This isn't just, you know, you, you figure it out. It's like, you have to go and get your face kicked in and make no money for a while. And you're going to have losses and you're going to, but you're playing a long game to build some enterprise value and you're going to get some upside and equity with this. Right? Well, you're, you're exactly right. You know, entrepreneurship and you, it's, it's hard to even describe to people what entrepreneurship even is and you know it's funny when i was a young guy you know the old older generation would look at us all scared you know it's like oh my gosh you're you're the people that's going to take care of us and now i'm looking at some of these you know high schoolers and college kids because i've got some high schoolers and the biggest thing that scares me and i look at them as hopefully as as entrepreneurial in some way the thing that scares me is their ability to problem solve yeah. You know, because you never you never know what's going to be thrown at you. You know, you can't anticipate all the problems. I don't know that I could train someone to be the CEO of Remington Solar unless they lived with it for a couple of years, you know, to be able to because you can't anticipate all the twists and turns. And it's all a challenge. It's all fun. But you have to have the ability to be flexible on a dime and you know, when I first got in the business, there were something like 15 different manufacturers of solar attic fans on homedepot.com. Now there are three. So one of the reasons why we've, I think, been able to compete is because we've kept low overhead. We've, we keep our risk to the minimum. We don't go way out on a limb. I mean, I'll tell you, D to Decon is probably the first and only trade show in 15 years Remington Solar has done. Wow, that makes me feel special. You, sh you, you should. I mean, I'm telling you, we, we don't do trade shows. I don't hire salespeople. I don't, we don't have a lot of overhead and we keep our margins, you know, tight and we make them good for our dealers. And it's, it's the cheapest product on the market. And for many years, I was, I, you know, people would say, oh, you know, they'd say, well, it's a great product. I'll go like, oh, how much is it? Well, it's more than the others. I'm like, okay, but it has better benefits. It has more attributes. It has, you know, it's worth the money. Okay, fine. You know, a Mercedes is more expensive than a Chevrolet for, for good reason, you know? What if I could sell Mercedes for the price of Chevrolets? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And most people don't, I mean, that's something that comes along maybe once in a lifetime. And I think I've got that with these solar attic fans. I mean, everybody wins. I mean, the homeowners love them. We never have anybody say, oh, I'm sorry I bought this. I'm sorry I, I got this. Yes, now they love it. I mean, if they, I mean, I, I assume you know what soffit ventilation is, where intake, clean, you know, fresh air comes in from an attic. They gotta have those clear so the fresh air can come through. I've probably gotten three calls in, in, in the last decade from people saying, my attic is still hot. It's like, okay, go clear your soffit vent 
because it's probably has insulation all over it, you know, or leaves or whatever. Go make sure that's clear and get that fresh air blowing through and we don't hear from them again. Okay. So, but anybody else selling a solar attic fan? Look at the price. We're going to be less. I mean, based on the power, you know, the wattage, a 20 watt compared to a 20 watt or a 30 watt or a 40, you know, apples to apples. We're cheaper. We're a better product. And I think maybe our may, we have, might have a competitor that has maybe a 20 year warranty, 25 year lifetime warranty, parts and components. As long as I'm alive, you have a motor problem, I'll send you a new motor. You have a thermostat problem, I'll send you a new thermostat. Just call us. I mean, it's it's a fun it's a fun gig. It's fun. It's because, like I said, everybody wins. And then these the, the people selling D to D. I remember it. Uh, I don't know if you remember. I I, I sent the uh, video to one of your staff. I don't know if you saw it or not, Sam. But this fellow yeah. from Colorado walked up to me at D to D Con. He said, "Oh, solar attic fans. I love those." I'm like, "Ah, oh, what do you do?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm an." He goes, "I'm an insulation and energy efficiency. That that's what they do. Go in and <coughs> excuse me." And those are the services they sell. He's like, oh, I love solar attic fans because I've been selling them for years. Easiest upsell. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Would you say this on video? Yeah. And I said, would you please do that for me? And he's like, yeah. And all the D2D guys are so great on the spot. I mean, all of them can just off the cuff. They can speak. And when the when the camera's on or when, they, or when the person opens the door, they are on script. They are ready to go. And that guy gave me the best video referral I could have, I couldn't have bought, I couldn't have paid for that. And uh, I believe it's on our website somewhere. Um, real nice guy, but just completely unsolicited. Just said, oh yeah, it's the easiest upsell, great benefit. They don't cost anything. And just, I don't understand why everybody didn't sell them. I'm like, oh, thank you for saying that, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. I love it. No, guys, if you're interested in adding that service and product to your, your bank, go to remingtonsolar.com or email msmith at remingtonsolar.com and make sure to, to reach out like he's definitely somebody like that we've worked with as a vendor for a few years and have had lots of success with some of the clients that we have and so you know check it out like it's like get creative um add value to the homeowner in, in different and unique ways um so go for sure reach out for sure um i want to i want to I want to wrap with one last thought or question. Um, kind of goes to this failures because you've seen up and down decades, meaning the last decade we've been in a massive, it's hard to lose. You were to buy a house five years ago, you could have bought the worst house at the worst price and still been really high. You know what I mean? Like you would have made money, it would have appreciated and you couldn't have lost. You know, people in crypto, everybody's like i'm a crypto guru i'm like you don't even know what effing crypto is you just happen to ride the wave of like a crypto up and now it crashes and like how much of a guru are you dude like do you even have history of like what this is um and so i i, I think you've seen multiple you know recessions and ups and downs when people talk about failures you know i i guess i'm just curious to see what do you foresee in this recession for entrepreneurs you know, or maybe it wasn't as easy or it isn't as easy to win, or maybe it's easier or like, you know, as far as moving into a recession or a different landscape of economy, what advice would you give an entrepreneur at this point? Yeah. I mean, thanks for the question, Sam. It's, um, first of all, I would say there's two types of entrepreneurs. There's, they're the entrepreneurs that ha are calculated, that have some kind of professional experience and they're, they're going to parlay that or build off that and, and grow their business from a certain industry or product knowledge. Then they're the, the I, I say losers because I'm talking about myself, that are just like have no skills that just are opportunists. They look for something, they look for opportunity out there and they try to turn that into a business. And because I could never work for anybody. So I'm, this is built into me. This is into my genetic structure to have my own deal. If I had zero, you know, if I, if I didn't have any knowledge of anything, I would, if I had to mow lawns, I would do it. But I promise you, I would have the biggest lawn service company in Dallas, you know, within a short period of time. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, that's, believe me, failure is not a goal. Failure is a, it's just something that's going to happen. As far as a recession is concerned, 
Um, I think we're, we're anticipating a, re a recession probably in Q1, Q2 next year. Um, there is always opportunity out there. I mean, there are people that, I mean, I'm not in this business, but I've, I've kind of, you know, tweaked an ear when I hear people talk about consumer lending, you know, short-term consumer lending. So there are going to be people that are going to be, you know, that need short-term loans, you know, in a recession. Well, there are people making a lot of money doing short-term loans for people in that kind of environment. Doing, uh, I, I met a fellow once, um, here's another great story. And I'm sorry, this is all anecdotal, but- uh, I love it, I love it. Yeah, uh, but uh, a fellow that I knew once, he made, he was making, and this was this was 10 years ago, he was making $400,000 a year in the credit repair business. And uh, he and I were friends and I had another business and, and uh, so, you know, we were doing okay and he was doing okay. And I said, hey, what would you think about this? Re I have a restaurant idea. Now, this is a kid who didn't know anything about the restaurant business, but he was, and he was making 400,000 a year doing credit repair. And he said, Murray, if it's a great, great idea, he goes, let me know. He goes, I'll go work as a waiter for three months. Then I'll go work as a host for three months. Then I'll go work as a cook for three months. And then I'll go, then by then they'll let me in the admin side and I'll go do bookkeeping and I'll learn the business. He had enough sense to know that he had to know the business before he just goes out and buys a restaurant for goodness sake, you know? And so that would be the advice I would say, you know, in anticipation of recession, don't do anything you don't know anything about. Be prepared to make minimum wage. That's, I mean, in college, you have to pay them. So at least they're paying you minimum wage to go learn a business. You know, mm -hmm. that's not wasted time. I mean, I you know, I, I, I'd love the idea of starting a BMW shop where you could hang out and have a little bar and work on your BMWs. But boy, I'd sure go learn those businesses for minimum wage before I would just go plunk down half a million dollars to start that. You know what I'm saying? I would go learn the pieces and then do it. No, so the youngest CEO of a Fortune 500 company was Black and & Decker, and he did that. He, everybody was crazy. He went and graduated college and then he went and worked as like the low level job. And everybody's like, dude, you should be making 80 grand out of Harvard. And he's like, meh, I just want to learn the skill and I want to learn the business. And then I want to learn this business skill and then I want to learn this. So I'm like a Swiss army knife when it comes to being a CEO. I've like seen every element of different businesses. Yeah. And I didn't get paid the 80 to 100 grand that you guys all got right out of college. But I now am like the CEO of Black & Decker. You know what I mean? And it's like, I think it's an interesting advice is too many people think it's wasted time. They're like, well, why would I waste my time, you know, in college or, 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 or being a rep or being a admin for this company? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, don't see it as that. Like, yeah, it's wasting time if it doesn't project you into like the education field that what you're wanting to go. So get clear on the long term goals. But it's like at the same time, everyone like, I put in 10 years of being a rep, a manager, a regional before I left and started my own business, but I was part of big businesses. I was mentored by awesome people. I, you know, I, was, I went from rep to VP of sales. Like I have the perfect trajectory of, you know, and then to owner, right? Like, it, like if you look at my story, it's rep, a couple of years, the manager, a couple of years, then regional, a couple of years, then VP, a couple of years, and then went and started a business. And I had so a- So let me ask, let me ask you, Sam, did you know that you were on an entrepreneurial track or were you just selling and making money and thought sales was going to be your future? Both. I, I always had that entrepreneurial itch. I just didn't know I'd be doing this. You know, I didn't know that I'd be doing uh door to door consulting or whatever you want to call this and tech. And, but, but what's interesting is I, I knew the value of good mentorship and making sure I was sitting in the seats at the table around really good leaders that I looked up to. And, you know, I, I, I kept getting reinvested in sales because I was like, man, the money and the opportunity is so good. Why would I walk away when the, when the fire is still hot? Um, and, you know, and it, and it took a lot for me to go start my own thing, but I think a lot of people go too soon and they don't have the education and then it just costs them a lot more money in dummy tax 
when they try to, you know, and, and, and when you go to entrepreneur, you're going to have dummy tax no matter how <laughs> well you are. So welcome to a business owner. But like, I just think it helped pave a, an easier way, even though it wasn't maybe I knew exactly where I was going. I just knew one day it'd be cool to, to run my own business. So, yeah. Well, I think people get out of school and they think that, or, or, you know, high school or wherever, you know, whatever their track is, and they could kind of get locked in a pattern and they think they just need to kind of grow and build with a good job and just kind of work their way up wherever working their way up is. But people's mindsets are hard to change. And, you know, like even our business now, you know, to get people's mindset to change. If you have a pitch that's working for you with solar, it's hard to change that pitch. Well, yeah. if I could get the sales managers and owners to just add a solar attic fan into their pitch, yeah, it's a little bit of a paradigm shift for what they know works, but it's like, look, you know, if if we're in a medieval battle and I have a machine gun, just try the machine gun, you, yeah. you know, see how that works out. It's true though, like, and that that's part of innovation. One of my core values at DD Experts is innovation. And I think there are people that get stuck in the, this is what we've always done. So let's always do that. And they're afraid to break it. I'm always like, let's break ourselves, which my team is like, wow, it's finally working. I'm like, yep, now we're gonna start something else. And they're like, all right. But I'm like, that's how we grow is that innovation. But like, what's cool is like, you know, if I were to pitch and I'll, I'll end with this, guys, this is Sam's sales pitch when it comes to Solar Attic Fan. On the door, I'd preface, you know, cause everybody's doing this net metering pitch and now the net metering pitch is saturated. And then it's like, you say solar in certain markets and everybody's like solar, no, not interested. So I'm just like, Hey, we're just here because everybody has terrible insulation. I'd lead with the attic fan. And that would get me my foot in the door because I'm like, Hey, do you mind if like, do you guys have electrical, no fan fan or solar? Like, what do you guys use to ventilate your, your roof? Because it's hot, it's Arizona, it's Texas, it's Florida, it's wherever you're selling. Right and uh be like what we're doing is just a free inspection to see if you know i have this I, i'd actually even bring one of those heat guns that shows uh, a, a, a thermal imaging of where their hot spots are and you could shoot it right up on the ceiling you shoot in the attic and be like wow look how hot it is here and then they're just like oh shiz and it builds that emotion and be like wow a um, couple things we could do you know first thing we're going to do no matter what is an attic fan um, but let's get your bill and see where you're, you're, you are in comparison based on your square foot. What's the square footage of the house? And then like, let me see your usage. And now I've got the bill, but I'm not even bringing up solar. I'm not even like, I'm not even pitching solar. I'm like, oh, cool. You're at like 250 bucks a month. And are you happy with that? Like, or would you like to see it less? And you know, they're raising the utility rates, right? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, I mean, with inflation and you see gas prices, utility prices just had their big hike your 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 hvac didn't say oh they're raising rates let's be more efficient you know your 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 unit's not changing so we just need we just want to do some things to see if we can like save you money you'd be open to that right cool and you're you're like think about this like it's so natural when you're in a saturated market that differentiates you you've got your foot in the door you're in the house now you're like oh let's sit down at the table let me show you kind of what we do and go into it that way then the back end pitch so you can use an attic fan or, or a thermostat or insulation. There's a couple of things, but this is an easy one because it actually requires like an installation. And um, you basically are like, there's two ways to do this. One, give them a 90% offset and just assume the attic fan in every single deal. It's not like you have to sell it. Or two, use it as your gift. So be like, yeah, most people get solar at zero down, but then when they get solar, they want to get like an attic fan. Those cost like a thousand bucks. Then you got your warranties. Those are 2000. Then you have the install that's 2000. Then you have, you know, X, Y, Z thousand, you know, you build up like I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't look at this holistically and not tell you about the other things. And they're like, oh, and then at the end, you're like, look, if you do this today, I'm going to pay for this, pay for this, pay for this, pay for this. You bake it in as an adder. And it's like the upfront cost to you is nothing. And then you cut a hole in the roof. Do you and think they're going anywhere? No. Um, I bet your cancellation is less than 1% once you get this, where I think the industry average is about 20% from what I'm seeing. Yeah. Some companies are at 30, 40% because they sell super hard on the site survey. 
So what's interesting is like, I could even have the site survey guy cut the hole in the roof, install the damn attic fan and be like, cool, we're gonna start the project because it looks like you passed the site survey. And if I'm selling hard on the site survey, and then I can get them to that point, then I can install the attic fan and it's kind of like, well, no, we already started. What are you talking about? Like, we're already doing this. You passed. Right. <laughs> and you could play that game so well. And, 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 but the problem is, is like, great, you passed. There's still no teeth in them. There's still no, they can, you know, they, they get cold feet in another week and it's like, yeah, we don't want to do it. Or they just ghost you. At that point, you've got solar attic fan installed or something installed. All of a sudden, it's like, hey guys, like I'm either gonna, you know, send you an invoice for 20 grand, or, or we're just gonna keep the project moving. Which one do you want? <laughs> it's like uh, exactly. So it's beautiful. I love that. I love that pitch. I know it would work. You know. Oh, it would. I mean, I did it. I did it back. So Sol Segura was my very first customer in Virginia. It'd be a good one to hit up. Um, but they would do a Pearl certification. Have you ever heard of Pearl certification? So it's yeah. like, a, you have to qualify as a company to be able to offer it, but it's basically like you make your home a certain increase. It has to be, you know, energy efficient approved, but once it is, it, it goes on the actual appraisal. So it, it, it's a tangible thing that goes and increases the value of the home as the Pearl certification to show that this is worth more as a home because it's energy efficient, because we've done this, 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 and this. Hmm. And so we would, bring in these energy audits to make sure that they qualify for these pearl certifications that were real tangible assets and then we're like using insulation and other things like attic fan and whatnot to to help help sell the solar um so i don't know i i just think people have gotten lazy i, I don't know i'm like this where's the creativity so guys again if you're interested m smith at remingtonsolar.com uh go to remingtonsolar.com go check it out and uh, Murray, dude, thanks for being on the show, man. This was super Lots impressive. of fun, Sam. Yeah, you're obviously great at this. So it was a pleasure being with you. So thank you very much. See you in January, man. Absolutely. Can't wait. Okay, we'll see you guys. Okay. All right, we'll see you.